YouTube, that time has finally arrived. It is week 18 of the Washington football season. We're going to find out if it's winning into the playoffs, winning some help, losing in potentially. Who knows? We'll get into all that in just a little bit before we get into the video. I again want to thank you guys for watching. If you click like on the video, that helps the video get to recommended pages as we always talk about. Uh, comment below your frustration or your happiness and what I'm about to tell you. Uh, it was just brought up about an hour or so ago that the scouting update for franchise mode is not going to officially drop until mid-October. October. So it's September 17th at the time, 3.47 p.m. at the time of recording of uh, this video. So that means that roughly a month from today, we should expect the scouting update to be live in franchise mode. I wish it was out already and I am upset too because I said that my second franchise that I would be rolling out in Madden along with this one would come out when the scouting update came out. So that for me means that another series that I'm going to put my heart and soul into is another month away which is very unfortunate but we do have a lot of fun things planned for this series so let's get back to where we're at here and the first thing i think we should do is upgrade our players and, and staff and everything but we want to look at where we are in the playoff chase and we have a lot of good upgrades this week and speaking of good upgrades how about the actual uh, actual washington football team playing pretty well against the um against the new york giants and that was uh that was an interesting game i only know what else to say about that game other than that um i want to include uh possession on logan thomas because that's been a big issue for him catching not part of our skill tree or a scheme fit but i do like the upgrade there as well and then deron Payne had a very very good week last week uh block shed tackle pursuit i think those are all although power move and Boy, I kind of like this a little bit more. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do Power Rusher. Up to 90 overall for Deron Payne. Love that. So the next thing that we got to do before we upgrade staff is we got to see what week 18 looks like. Are we a playoff team? Are we not? I have so many questions. We do have... Um, I'm trying. Oh, we have injury. I was like, why is the graph so long? So Jonathan Allen and Kendall Fuller are both ready to play. I guess we should see where they're at so the interesting thing before i go into the playoff picture if this was a normal season this would be it like this would be we either made the playoffs or we didn't but the nfl added one more week to the regular season this year and we're about to find out if it'll prove fruitful for the washington football team or not and let's look at the playoff picture and we are in the playoffs currently as the number six seed to play the Cowboys. Okay. I like what I'm seeing. And we're also in a really tricky spot too. Looking at um, like, like just look at this. So there's seven teams that make the playoffs. All four divisions have been clinched. The three wild cards as it stands right now are the Washington football team, the LA Rams and the San Francisco 49ers. And behind them are the Packers and the Seahawks so but we're in control of our own destiny like if we win this game we are in the playoffs because we already hold a playoff seed right now that is not a concern of mine but if we lose i guess we should maybe look at what could potentially happen uh i think the rams and 49ers are playing each other so one of them is going to lose along with us and if we're above them the standings right now i don't know what the tiebreaker is it might be strength of schedule, I'm assuming. I, I would assume that we're still a playoff team unless the Packers and the Seahawks both win. But the Saints are out. Everybody else down here out as well. And we also play the Giants who are 6-10 and out of the playoff race. But, you know, more than anything, the goal is essentially complete. Now, you want to pump the brakes because the last thing that we want to do is assume we're in, lose the game, miss the playoffs, and everybody's really sad. But as it stands right now, we win and we're in. So I'm going to hold on to uh, staff points here, but let's look into what our game day goals are and get into the final game of the season. The Giants, the G-Men actually just beat them in real life yesterday, did the actual Washington football team. And I want to go for as much points as possible. And I think that we can win the turnover battle. So there's one. Uh, defensively, I think we can sack uh, Daniel Jones three times easily. Uh, especially if you could tell how it went on Thursday. 
offensive goals um i think i want to play mistake free football as much as i can limiting turnovers is impossible we have ryan fitzpatrick at quarterback and i just don't know the likelihood of that let's say lead by nine at halftime and then the weekly game plan five plus sacks i don't know the likelihood of that either I'm going to say that we're hopefully going to be winning by a good amount. So we're probably going to be running the ball a good amount as well. Um, I will look at the five sacks is probably being our game plan though. So heading into the final week of the season, it looks like McCaffrey will be winning MVP for the Panthers who are going to be the number one seed in the NFC at 15 and one. They could end up going 16 and one, who knows, but what a crazy season for Carolina. Nick Chubb having a great season. The Browns are nine and seven, so they more than likely have to win to get into the playoffs. Lamar Jackson having a great year as well. Try to look at some other records that stand out to me. Chiefs at 13 and three. Titans five and eleven. Interesting. My Vikings six and ten. Sad about that, but um, going into coach of the year, Matt Rule. I mean, yeah, you're 15 and one. I agree with that. But Urban Meyer and the Jaguars, after a bad week one in real life, turning around will be interesting at 10 and six. But again, we have a couple guys returning from injury before we get into the actual game here. And Jonathan Allen back in our defensive line back at full strength, like we mentioned. And a very, very big game coming up here. Kendall Fuller is good to go as well. And my strategy is the following we have to win this game we don't have to win this game we more than likely need to win this game to make the playoffs if we lose there's still a reality where we win i want to try our best to get up as early as possible the rest guys in the second half if that's even possible as well um looking at the schedule i don't know what the league schedule looks like for week 18. So the Cowboys and Eagles play right at kick. That doesn't factor in for us. The Packers and Lions does factor into us. So that scoreboard will be on the bottom of the screen as the game is going on. So we could scoreboard watch a little bit there. And then the, the Rams and uh, the Rams and 49ers play at 425. And then Seahawks play later at night. So, I mean, essentially, we're not really going to be scoreboard watching. We have to win our game. It's just really what it factors into because... Um, uh, the Ravens, as it stands right now, are the number one seed in the NFC or the AFC. The Jaguars, the Texans, and the Jets being playoff teams, I'll get out of the, the way here, uh, is mind blowing to me, to be honest with you. Like, I, I don't think any of those three teams would be making the playoffs. I also don't think the Colts will either. And it's an interesting playoff look on the AFC side. NFC side, I could see Carolina making it. I don't think Chicago will. I don't think San Francisco will. I do think the Dallas will. And I do think the Washington football team will as well. I do think the Rams and I do think the Buccaneers. So, I mean, it's the NFL. Like weird stuff happens and we're about to hopefully finish off a six game winning streak to finish the season. And if we lose in heartbreaking fashion, then that'll just be the worst thing ever no injuries no injuries no injuries please oh oh my goodness man dislocated shoulder and a pcl sprain i don't even know what a pcl is is that like in your shoulder joint i don't think that's your leg no offensive injuries, thankfully, but two really big injuries on the defensive front. So we're going to have to kind of look at what this looks like now. A couple upgrades here as well. Um, only one notable Cam Curl and uh, Benjamin St. Juice will do first. Want to upgrade Benjamin's zone ability if at all possible. So we'll upgrade his uh, zone and play recognition. I think that's a smart uh, one to do there a lot of upgrades too. change the direction upgraded for uh, Benjamin and then cam curl um, our free safety they have listed as a strong safety on here but I want to keep upgrading cam curl zone ability as well run support is the scheme fit but I don't really like that compared to the zone upgrade and cam curl moving up to an 80 overall love to see that for us let's look at the lineup and see what this factors into for this week um, at our injuries that just happened and see um, what the defense is looking like. So, um, wait, who was even hurt? I'm forgetting. Oh, Landon Collins uh, had an injury. Uh, he'll be out for one week. Okay, so just a one-week injury, not the end of the world there. I thought Kendall Fuller had a sprain. So I guess he had a sprain, so he's not, like, hurt, hurt. But uh, looking at our, our hidden development here, uh, Davis is... 
44 snaps away from finding out his potential uh, for Jamin Davis, who had a phenomenal game uh, last game against the Giants in real life, which is very exciting. As far as the offensive side of the Brown I, I, ball, Diami Brown, I believe, is still a little bit of ways away. He had 301 snaps, uh, less than 500. So uh, hopefully going to figure out that development heading into the second season. I should have probably played him a little bit more and benched Curtis Samuel because Samuel did get hurt. Um, in real life, but you know, this is a different universe with our team as opposed to the real Washington football team. Cause Fitzpatrick's also healthy for our simulation. He'll not be the quarterback next year, but at the least, at the very least, we have a chance to be a playoff team. We have a big game against the giants and then we can start popping some champagne. All right. So we are here in the Meadowlands for week 18 of the regular season. The Washington football team and the New York Giants and we're kicking off to begin the final week of the regular season. It has had a lot of ups, a lot of downs, particularly in the middle of the season. But we are here in the final game and we'll begin on defense. So if you saw how the game went uh, for me yesterday, for you, it might be a couple days ago. The Thursday night game with the Giants and the Washington football team, the Giants had some interesting coaching decisions and the point of why i'm bringing that up is i only hope that we don't have questionable coaching decisions here we have a game that we need to win we just got to play smart football and a check to the outside jackson with a dive and evan ingram will make a reception for 12 yards and daniel jones and the giants have their first first down of the game so a big hit on Barkley forces third down the Giants in a single back set. Once again, a lot of heavy formations so far this game looking to throw is Daniel Jones looking for the second level. Now looking deep downfield in the end zone Fuller with the interception and he's going to take this one out. Probably not a great idea by Fuller, but you think why not an errant ball by Daniel Jones and the Washington football team forced a turnover to begin and some trickery already to begin for the football team as well going for the delayed jet sweep here handoff to gibson trying to get the sideline i don't know why the sprint wasn't working there so gibson wrapped up second down last thing you want to do after the defense forces a turnover is go three and out so i need to get some yardage here on second down and we're gonna get that in a lot more gibson cuts it back inside nearly one i mean it was one on one gibson gets past that runner it's his biggest run of the year regardless though a big run to be had there on second down and now on first and ten about the 30 yard line i keep bringing it up because we got to win this game and just gotta try our best to play mistake free football as well gibson not getting out of the backfield there he goes there and he'll try to cut that away but just not a lot of guys getting open so far antonio gibson here on third and six again looking to throw brown near the sideline and Aaron ball once again and a really ugly offensive drive after forcing interception on new york that was just like errant passes and blocking that isn't following and guys not hitting their holes correctly and you know it all could have been a lot better had antonio gibson had a good run but the giants will get the ball back after the interception and about the range of a touchback here on first and ten the run heavy offense of the giants will look to run here on play action they go for the play action jamin davis in on his first sack of the game and I don't know what it is about our Washington football team linebackers reading play action so well. Holcomb had done very well earlier this season. Now Jamin Davis, the rookie, getting in the fold as well. And a deep pass to Evan Ingram over the middle. Breaks a tackle as well. And it's just the bend but don't break mentality. It's just not... Like, I, I, I'm asking for less bend. I'm asking for some more consistent play over defense. A sack then leads into a big play on second down. And now an opening. Evan Ingram is there. St. Ju actually, actually, Cam Curlin on the tackle. So two great passes in a row by Daniel Jones and this New York uh, Giant offense. And now the Giants knocking on the door of field goal range. Evan Ingram already up to 58 yards receiving so far. Another pass over the middle. And this will be brought down inside the red zone now. And here come the New York Giants after Darius Slayton picks up a catch. Big hit stick, but a good catch though by the former Viking Kyle Rudolph. And here we are again. Third and two, nine yard line. 
A big play here might get them a touchdown. They might be running the ball to Barkley, though. Daniel Jones under center. Handoff up the middle. Holcomb is there on the wrap-up, and they look to be short. So a big question mark for the New York Giant offense. Do you go for it on fourth to one at the eight-yard line still early in the first quarter? And the decision here will be to go for it by the New York Giants, and I do like this call. So on fourth and one, Daniel Jones under center, a single back set tight end to his left is Evan Ingram. He's looking to throw to the outside and he'll not only have Evan Ingram in the flat, he'll also have him cutting up field and the first score of the game will belong to the uh, New York Giants. And I mentioned, we might not have to win this game to make the playoffs, but it doesn't hurt to win this one. And now on the road in a potential, I mean, we have to win. I, I think I'm going to abort my statement and say we have to win, and we're down by seven early. Time to put the pedal to the metal and get the offense going here. So on first and 10, a play action pass looking to throw Gibson to the sideline again and just not having a lot of separation up field three of four for five yards passing so far is ryan fitzpatrick looking to throw uh to toss it to antonio gibson once again cuts it back up field nothing there and the offensive play calling so far for washington been incredibly mundane and even though this might result in a sack, I do like looking for Diami Brown downfield. See if McLaurin can maybe win his route there on third and 12. Looking to throw is the Washington football team. We're looking deep for McLaurin downfield. He'll have the play in a one-on-one -on -one high step into the end zone. Touchdown, Washington. One-on-one -on -one defense for the New York Giants. And when you're running man defense against deep uh, crossing patterns like that downfield, just not a recipe uh, for success for the Giants. And in one play, an incredibly mundane offense has found their life right away via the arms of Ryan Fitzpatrick to Terry McLaurin. And now an even contest there in the end of the first quarter here in the Meadowlands. Other than Daniel Jones trying to go deep for the, the pass to Slayton that was uh, overthrown for the interception, he's been fantastic so far today. And another good check down underneath will get them near midfield. 10 of 11, 118 yards and a touchdown. And just another rough quarter for the Washington defense. And we'll head to the second quarter and tie things into real life. Uh, some questionable coaching decisions made by the Giants in the game last night. But their offense looked pretty good despite the fantastic pass rush of the Washington football team and that one to the sideline and that's going to be caught for another first down that one to Kenny Galladay's first reception of the game second reception of the game excuse me so third and 10, Daniel Jones in the shotgun sending another blitz here is the Washington football team to the sideline. That one's going to be caught by Kenny Galladay. Benson backs having a really tough time staying consistent so far. Daniel Jones having his way with our defense as well and now looking to throw and that's going to be a short play underneath and you really got to compliment the Giants as you'll see on the play screen here. The tight end's running a little bit of a, a 10 yard in and there's a slant coming underneath so the middle linebacker has decisions in a zone on who he's covering we run man they're doing a good job of running slants i mean you really got to credit the, the new york giant offense here so far as barkley will be tripped up by Jamin davis on the play and it'll be first and goal for the g-men so second and goal goal line formation here for the giants on the five yard line trying to force third gonna be a pitch to the outside Holcomb and a community of others wrap up Saquon Barkley at the six yard line six carries 12 yards nothing doing so far have to be weary of a pass play here on third down though because we've done a really bad job of defending passes in the red zone and we'll see what the Giants do on here on third and goal here and we're gonna have another opening for a touchdown just the pass defense inside the 10 yard line has been just awful this season. There's been no uh, guys coming to the zones, man defense, slants are beating us. I don't really know what the answer is, but I do know that the Giants are looking good. And the more we can keep the ball out of their hands, the better. We do get the ball to begin the second half. And I think we just have to try testing our fate downfield more because the checkdowns early were not working. I'm going to let Strowman take this one out of the end zone here. 
and he'll go back to about the 25 yard line and the washington football team are back to work on offense montez sweat with bruised ribs is interesting that's i don't even remember seeing the injury pop up a blitz coming in for new york giants though and i like running at this formation gotta get gibson going at some point and gibson will be wrapped up for about four not a bad carry though Brown with a great round. He'll cut this one off field and be close to a first down. So Diami Brown, a good catch there. And an interesting call here on third and inches. The toss crack has been a very boomer bust play for us offensively. I like the prospect of getting outside here on third and inches and looking to run as Gibson going to be close to a first down and he'll get right back to the line of scrimmage. And I think we have to go for this one again. John Bates has been our man to call on short yardage in these situations. And it will be a handoff to Bates here, and he'll find just enough for the first down. So a great job by Bates ducking his head in there, getting up, up uh, getting that conversion, excuse me. And nearing the end of the second quarter, been a very quiet game so far in the first quarter. Second quarter, a lot louder of a game. Seals Jones of the run incomplete. And now on third and eight, we just mentioned we have had a very tough time stopping the New York Giant offense. Looking to try and make this at least fourth and manageable. We're going to have a lot more in an errant pass by Ryan Fitzpatrick. Had McLaurin wide open, and this is going to have to be a punt. Tressway on for the punt from the 48-yard line, and this one will go out of bounds at about the 18, and got to figure out something soon because the offense outside of recognizing a mismatch on the outside on uh, Terry McLaurin earlier this game have just been not good at all and a couple bad passes by Ryan Fitzpatrick and now looking for a check down on the outside Evan Ingram will come back up field and lower his shoulder starting to look like a career game from Evan Ingram I mean he's looking fantastic right now pressing the line of scrimmage here on second and five gotta try to force this to third and long looking to throw to the outside off of the hands of Kendall Fuller and Montez Sweat, who I thought I said was going to be out for this game, I, at least I told him to not play, was back in there and got hurt. So we'll have third and five. And a fumble! And this wasn't going to be picked up on the Giants' offensive line! I thought that was scoop and score mentality or possibility right there. Dislocated shoulder for Montez Sweat. I told him not to come back in. He came in anyway, so Montez Sweat is hurt. And the Giants are hurt as well as Daniel Jones gets a strip sack and a fumble. That one picked up, fortunately for them, by their offensive line. But heading into the two-minute warning, Strowman might have had a lane to bring that one back. Terry McLaurin, good route sideline, and there's finally a good ball by Ryan Fitzpatrick, a route that we went away from. I uh, used a lot earlier this season, and teams definitely caught on. So going away from that play is the Washington offense going back to it there on third and long, converting to Terry McLaurin. And now on the run, Logan Thomas, and he'll cut this one up field, and he'll get out of bounds for another. First down, and Ryan Fitzpatrick looking good outside of about three really errant balls. I also like making sure the Giants will not have uh, time to run for the rest of the quarter. So going to do a handoff to, uh, to Antonio Gibson. I'm tripping over my words a lot. I also just got home from an eight-hour shift uh, teaching. Well, uh, more than eight hours. But I just got home from teaching. So uh, brain is pretty, pretty much mush. I'm leading the league and tripping over my words right now. So second and three, chewing clock just to make sure the Giants don't have any more time to really call plays. And Antonio Gibson will be wrapped up there. Going to call a timeout here on third down. So third and four could have Logan Thomas right away. Could also look for Samuel as well. And we're going to have Samuel on the run off of his hands. Would have been a first down. Instead, going to have to settle for three. And Hopkins, who had an incredibly clutch kick last week to preserve the uh, victory for the Washington football team, is going to just sneak this one in the upright. Not going to talk anymore anytime I'm kicking a field goal. 
Hand off Jonathan Allen with a big tackle there. Going to force third down and a timeout called by Washington. Jonathan Allen in the X Factor. The Giants in an I form set. Play action boot is not there. It's a handoff to Saquon Barkley for nothing once again. And we'll see if we can get crazy here. The reason why I call these timeouts is because I thought that our punt covers look better than their punt coverage and this the whole reason Strowman might have a chance to run something here nearing the end of the half and he'll get tripped up at the 40 yard line and it's just enough time to look for a Hail Mary downfield uh see if we can maybe man I almost wish that I you know what I am gonna run Brown a slant I, I don't know if he could get like to the sideline for a field goal range here but i'm gonna look at that potentially being a play and yeah we're just not gonna have time i i thought that six seconds would be enough um it definitely was not so diami brown wraps that one in we do get ball to start the second half but in a game that I would think that we have to win to be a playoff team, we're down by four. Art is pretty much even score, somewhat even entering into the third quarter. And Gibson cuts this one back to the outside. One man to beat, he just barely gets wrapped up in the 44 yard line. A great run by Antonio Gibson. Thought he was gonna break that for a touchdown there. So on second and 10, looking to run are the Washington football team. And this is going to be a good one to Antonio Gibson, who will get into the 46-yard line and third and inches. And I don't want to be cute here. I would like to go for a big pass, but we're losing by four. And John Bates with a favorable defensive line look from the New York Giants has been our man here on third and short. And he'll get just enough again to pick up that vital first down. Play action look here for the football team. Samuel near the end of the end zone will make the catch. Abandoning the route is the New York Giant defensive back. I'm not sure if you saw that there. I don't know if he thought there was communication with the safety, but he stuck on the route initially on Curtis Samuel, then vacated the route and left Samuel. Look, watch this here. He's on Samuel and then he breaks off of him. I mean, what a peculiar uh, job there by Jabril Peppers. Assuming he has over-the-top coverage, he certainly does not. And a dime dropped in by Ryan Fitzpatrick to Curtis Samuel. And the Washington football team have the lead once again to begin the third quarter. So what I've been noticing is that man blitzes have been working very well against the New York Giants. We're calling one again here on first and 10. Daniel Jones looking to throw and he's going to have a quick completion. So credit to Daniel Jones. Recognizing the blitz are coming in. Now he's getting the ball out a little bit faster. Good touch passes as well. Again, just I really like the way Daniel Jones has played here so far. A play action look here on first down. Check to the outside to Evan Ingram, but cuts it back up field, breaking off of a tackle and picking up a first down. And I mean, Evan Ingram nearly 80 yards received. Oh, he's over 80. So uh, 83 yards receiving on six receptions. A fantastic game so far. For the New York Giant tight end and on first and 10, going to be a handoff to Barkley, finds a hole up the middle, and he'll be tripped up to the 40-yard line, his biggest run of the game. Jones under center, Barkley the tailback behind him, and a hole for Barkley, and a juke up field in nearly into the red zone of the 21 yard line so back to back phenomenal runs by saquon barkley and now the giants are back knocking on the door of points for themselves here gotta keep our eyes on barkley the tailback with daniel jones and the shotgun looking to throw cuts it up field is barkley near the sideline wow that's a very bad ball by daniel jones and jonathan allen is banged up as well injuries happening at a furious rate uh, in the third quarter here, we had Montez sweat earlier. Now, Jonathan Allen potentially hurt, and Evan Ingram will pick up the first down, and the fate on Jonathan Allen will be found out for another play. I, I don't know. Like, I, Madden's weird about telling me the timetable on injuries, but 
Never want to see two of our top defensive players get hurt like that. And it's going to cause a big ruckus in our defensive line because Barkley walks in for the touchdown and the Giants have retaken the lead here halfway through the third quarter because of two gigantic injuries to Montez Sweat and Jonathan Allen. Injuries happen in football all the time. And if you can have guys behind them that can still do the job, I feel like that's what's most important. And now we're going to lean on those guys to have some good defensive performances. And we'll hopefully have some good offensive performances here on first and 10. Shotgun look right away for Ryan Fitzpatrick looking to throw. McClure going to break on his route very well. That one being thrown up field. And this might be another one play touchdown for Terry McLaurin. Wow! You want to talk about finding your best player and hitting them where it hurts? Just right after the Giants take the lead, another bad call defensively. I mean, both times that McLaurin's broken out for touchdowns this game, it's been man defense. Zone has been shown this year to shut down Terry McLaurin, and yet the Giants continue to run man. Two one-play touchdowns, and we are back in the lead of this one. And Ryan Fitzpatrick had to give a credit as well. Fitzpatrick, who had a really rough about weeks four through nine stretch, has really bounced back very well for the Washington football team. A lot more mistake-free football, not throwing the ball up in coverage as much as he used to. But we'll see how the new front four look for the Washington football team as Holcomb will try to wrap up Barkley on the screen and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage second and ten. Would love a sack here on second and 10. Daniel Jones looking to throw, looking for Barkley, potentially the sideline. He'll cut this one up field, though. A good job of covering there on Sterling Shepard and a really big third down. We have enforced fourth down on third down. Elibra, uh, elaborate commentary by your broadcaster here since the first quarter. And on play action, going to go over the middle. Holcomb will rack, uh, wrap up Barkley, rather. A good delayed in route there and another first down for the New York Giants. And, you know, we've been in situations where the defense is leaned on the offense or the offense is leaned on the defense, what have you. A big hit by Moreland, but he ain't going to pop a lot of pressure in Saquon Barkley as he picks up that first down. And, I mean, we might have to lean on the offense this game to continue to go blow for blow with the Giants because I'm not sensing any pushed from our defense at all we've had very little negative plays we've had very little plays that have inspired confidence in me and it's just right there i mean our defensive back wasn't even moving like what are you waiting on i i don't know i i, I don't know what we put in the gatorade in practice this week but it's definitely affect our play defensively. The Giants in field goal range now. Got to hope that we hold them to that and not much more. And on first and 10, looking to run. Barkley cuts it upfield. He'll cut it upfield again, nearly breaking off a tackle. And another big gash up the middle. That has been where a lot of good runs for Barkley have come today. Now switching to a 3-4 look to try and somewhat accommodate what we're seeing from the New York Giants. Second and goal, looking to pass is Daniel Jones over the heart of the field, and there's another touchdown for the Giants. Man, zone, nothing is working against the Giants, and the Giants, I mentioned, are not a playoff team. They're going to be out of it this year, and they are playing spoiler so far to the Washington football team up again by four near the end of the third quarter. Both teams over 300 yards of total offense. It has been a game where it feels like defenses have just gone home. And Gibson tries to cut it to the outside. Gets about five there. A good run on first down will bring up second and five. And looking to run once again. Nearing the end of the third quarter is the Washington football team. Gibson blocking doesn't happen there. And that will send us to the fourth quarter. Not only a third and six. But a third and six where it feels like we haven't stopped the Giants at all this game. And I'm very worried that if we do not convert this first down, that that could be the end of our season. Oh, Aaron pass by... T oh, man. What a great route by Terry McLaurin. An errant pass by Ryan Fitzpatrick. And now we're really asking for a lot from our defense. The Giants up by four points. 
beginning the fourth quarter. Good punt coverage here for the Giants, and a big hit stick missed. Pettis will bring us to the 39-yard line, and just wondering when the defense is going to start stepping up and making some plays because it's not happening right now. Daniel Jones under center, three wide receivers to his right. It's going to be a handoff up the middle to Barkley, who will be wrapped up a fumble. Wow, Barkley fumbles the ball in the middle of that pile. I'm not sure. Looks like the offensive line picks it up for the Giants. Second fumble of the game. Neither of them have gone the way of the Washington football team, though. And we will have second and long. Daniel Jones in the shotgun look now. Looking for Barkley the outside. He's actually to go over the middle to Kenny Galladay. 270 yards passing for Daniel Jones. The Giants knocking on the door of the red zone as well. Jones looking to pass, there's nothing there. Need that sack! Chase Young flops off of him, but Ioannidis is there. Second and 20, a coverage sack and a much needed one here for Washington. We'll try to keep dialing up the pressure here on second and 20. And now Daniel Jones flipping the offense. So if there's a way where we can keep the Giants from getting that first down. That would be much needed. And on third and 13, here we go. Looking to pass. He's looking over the middle. He'll check into the sideline, overthrown to Saquon Barkley. And a field goal try is coming on here for the New York Giants. And I'm looking to probably return this one here. This is a very deep kick for the Giants from about the midfield logo from Graham Gano. Going to be a 59-yard try, and this one is going to be good. A 59-yard field goal by Graham Gano just barely squeaks through, and it's a seven-point game. And more so than... That is trying to get this first down here on third and six, looking for a screen to Gibson, and he'll float this one upfield, and it's going to be short for fourth down. Man, I mean, the prospects of this game are getting smaller and smaller as the game goes on. A big punt here for Tress Way, and we're going to need to stop Pettis right where he returned this at, and he'll break it up for another four or five yards, and we're about... 30 yards away from our season ending here in New York. The Giants will be running the ball heavily, looking for the Washington defense to make a stand here on first and 10. Holcomb and the community of others will wrap up Barkley in the backfield, though, second and 11. So third and four. On the 39-yard line, audible being called by the Giants. Looking to pass. Cuts this one up field. Pressure not coming in. Cam Curl with the interception. An errant ball by Daniel Jones. And the Washington football team have it. In the name of the word of the Lord is this defense the Giants have called here on first and 10. Gibson looking to take advantage of it. He'll pick up about 15 to the 46-yard line. And the blood pressure of the viewers of this series... These last three games have been pure chaos. And on second and seven, looking to maybe see if McLaurin can win his battle downfield. We'll see if we have man or zone. And we're looking for a pass to Diami Brown. He'll make the play and he'll get out of bounds. Good job by Fitzpatrick sitting in the pocket and letting those routes develop downfield. Second and 10, play action looking to throw. Thomas, one-on-one -on -one in the end zone off of his hands. We saw him win a one-on-one -on -one last week against Darius Slay. He does not win the one-on-one -on -one there. What could have tied the game is instead going to result in a third and 10. Fitzpatrick looking to throw. Brown breaking off his route to the end of the end zone. That catch will be off of his hands. And a field goal try coming up for Dustin Hopkins. Hopkins kick is up and it is good. 
and it is a four point game still with all three timeouts are the Washington football team with three minutes left potentially in their season Giants are chewing clock so thinking of a run play here second and seven Daniel Jones in the shotgun three round receivers right going to be a handoff misdirection Barkley will be swallowed alive by Deron Payne and we will head to the two minute warning on third and five Daniel Jones in the shotgun look, looking to pass. It's going to be a screen and an errant ball. Barkley did not break free. And now the Washington football team will have three timeouts inside the two minute warning with a chance to walk this one off in New York. Slayton, not Slayton, Strowman brings it out to the 28. And here we go. A touchdown will likely send the Washington football team back to the playoffs for the second season in a row. We will begin with a handoff to Gibson up the middle down to the 38-yard line. Second and inches, plenty of time here for the football team. Going to be a handoff to Gibson. He'll get the sideline and get out of bounds. What a good burst of speed by Antonio Gibson up to 108 yards this game. Fitzpatrick in the shotgun looking to throw. Do we dare go? No, we go here. A catch to Samuel. Possession catch first down. Still plenty of time. Going to have to call a timeout more than likely after this run here on first and 10. Gibson cuts it back up field. Nearly had a lane and will take a little bit of time for composure. 38 yard line. Two timeouts and 52 seconds left in the ball game. So on third down, looking to throw near the end zone. Logan Thomas in a one-on-one -on -one comes up and makes the play. Logan Thomas could not make the play earlier. A mismatch in the end zone once again. And Logan Thomas comes up in a big way. Ryan Fitzpatrick testing the New York Giants defense. Logan Thomas goes up and gets it over Jabril Peppers. And the Washington football team have the lead. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I wish we got the sack there, second down. Graham Gano literally just hit from 59 yards. So whatever can be done to keep Graham Gano off the field, the better. On second and 10, Daniel Jones in the shotgun looking to throw once again. He's looking to the outside. He'll go downfield. Cam Curl makes the play, but out of bounds, third down. D Giants down two, third and 10, looking to throw, looking for some upfield. There's nothing there. Now cutting it back upfield, going deep down the field, and he'll have a play and a big hit by Benjamin St. Juice. to the 24 yard line on a broken play. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, man. A broken play reminiscent to the Vikings and Seahawks and Russell Wilson about five years ago and a timeout being called by Washington to try and ice Graham Gano. And this kick could very well end our season. Graham Gano from the 22 yard line. Snap, spot, kick is up, and the Giants have taken the lead by one with one timeout and seven seconds left for Washington. First and 10, Fitzpatrick looking to throw. Gonna try and hit Brown to get out of bounds, and he'll make the play, but that's gonna be it. The New York Giants off of a errant extra point by Dustin Hopkins and a broken play that Daniel Jones had all the time in the world thanks to injuries from Jonathan Allen and Montez Sweat. We'll have walked off the, the Washington football team and we're going to have to find out if that's our season. Moment of truth. Advancing to the wild card week. And finding out if the next episode of this series is going to be the offseason or if it's going to be the wild card round of the playoffs. Here we go.
I, I don't know what this means. That's what it means. So, I mean, even looking at the draft, I mean, we're going to be the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, well, 16, 7. We're about the 16th, 17th pick of the first round of the draft because we just missed out in the playoffs at 9 and 8. I don't know how the Packers got in above us. I'm not really sure if it's like strength of schedule related or, or what have you, but um, yeah, I mean, if you look at the NFC and see what happened here, uh, there we go. So the Rams are the only team that won and got to 10 and seven and guaranteed themselves a playoff berth. And we're even above this, the Seahawks on here and they got, I, I don't know how that works. So again, um, the off season stream will be on my Twitch channel. I'm not going to be doing it in a video. I mean, I will upload the video eventually, but the first time you see it will be live on my Twitch. So if you want to follow my Twitch, there's a link in the description below. Crazy game. Um, I'll see you in the next one.